Hello, if you're just joining us, we are going to wait another minute or two for more families to arrive, and then we will get started. Thanks for being here. All right, we're going to dive on in. Um, welcome to all of our families who are joining us live and a shout out to those families who are not here now, but will be watching this recording later. My name is Grace Sullivan Zirkel and I serve as the Associate Director for New Student and Family Programs. And this is our last family webinar of the academic year. Um, we'll pick up next year again for those families who are returning or whose students are um, returning in the fall um, and a, a fond farewell to those families who may be joining in whose students will be graduating in just a short few weeks. Um, a few housekeeping items later in the session we will have some opportunity for Q&A so if you have questions throughout the session today feel free to type them in the Q&A below you should see that down below there's a little bar it says Q&A you can type questions there. Um, I have some colleagues who will are behind the scenes and will remain behind the scenes the whole session. You may see some of their names pop up um, to answer some questions. That's Karina Carpenter and Jordan Williams. And then our other folks will be on screen shortly. Uh, and with that, I am going to hand this over to our amazing Associate Vice President of Student Affairs for Student Engagement, Dr. Shruti Desai. Thank you, Grace. Uh, good afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are. Um, thanks to y'all for being here. And we're excited to talk to you today um, and have some great students who are also here to talk um, with you today. I know they're in the middle of getting ready for exams and so I appreciate their time um, being here. So I'll talk briefly about um, belonging and how we are working to create a sense of belonging um, at Duke within Student Affairs. I'll talk a little bit about student engagement and what that means for us. My area particularly is student engagement. Um, and then I'll kick it off to the students. They're really the ones I know y'all want to hear um, and their experiences really matter to me um, and to the division. And um, so I'm excited to hear from them as well. A few slides I'll share and then I will pass it over. Um, can everyone see that? Okay. Hold on. Oh, now you're seeing this thing. Okay, we are gonna skip that. I should have tested this before. Um, okay, that should work. Um, so a little bit about student affairs and student engagement. I've been at Duke University for um, a little over 15, I'm at 15 months now, um, and um, have really had an opportunity to kind of think about how we engage students post COVID, um, with COVID, uh, we're seeing some, uh, you know, shifts in our students um, and how COVID has impacted them, their social skills, their wayfinding, their ability to really feel connected um, in person um, and virtually. And so we're really thinking about that. Uh, the pipeline of who is coming to Duke is shifting. We are now a campus that has 52% of our students hold a minor minoritized identity, um, students of color. And so that's also been something that we're thinking about. How do we continue to support kind of our students, um, continue to support the changing uh, demographics of our university while also staying really true to our mission around academic engagement 
um, and feeling a sense of belonging. So um, we'll talk a little, oops, my, sorry friends, I'm having some computer issues. Um, talk a little bit about um, what the student engagement do. So there's two kind of three areas that I really oversee. One is um, campus life. So when we're talking about campus life, we're thinking about um, our um, student involvement in leadership. So historically, when you think about that, it's our student government, um, it's our finance, our student finance team, it's um, our uh, Duke Union, they put on big concerts, um, small arts programs, those kind of things. Um, and then our historically our fraternity and sorority life. I also oversee conference and event services. So anytime you come to campus and there's an event, we host that space um, and space is really important to students um, and where they hang out oftentimes is where they find their people. Um, and so that has been important. And then venue and performance management. So we handle a lot of the arts, um, programming, um, plays, all of those things come through our space, the radio station, um, all those things. Um, I also oversee our Senior Associate Dean of International Students and Scholars. So that encompasses all of our international students, both our graduate and undergraduate students. That's a new position, really as our number of international students is increasing, um, we're also seeing a need to have someone who really supports them fully. Um, and if you keep up with kind of international affairs, there's still a lot of countries that aren't either have an extensive kind of quarantine period or not allowing students to come back to their home countries. So we've really thought about how do we make, you know, if you can't go back for two years, three years, um, how do we make Durham feel more like home for folks? Um, and, and we have a lot of graduate students who also bring their families, but our undergraduates um, are here for the summer. There are a lot of their peers aren't. And so how do we start thinking about that differently? And the last um, position that I get to work with is our Assistant Vice President of Identity Centers and Community Development. This is all of our identity and cultural centers um, and really become hubs for our students who hold various identities. So the Mary Lou Williams Black Cultural Center, um, our Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity, really working with LGBT students, the Center for Multicultural Affairs. So they support Latino students, indigenous students, Asian and Asian American students. Um, and do a lot of work kind of moving the needle to in the undergraduate space to be more inclusive. The Women's Center that really does women's rights, um, education around gender equity and all those things, Jewish life, um, and then Muslim life. And those two are pretty, hopefully pretty self-explanatory. So when we're thinking about um, what we do, our mission and our motto is to thrive, is for students to thrive authentically and experience joy through community. Um, and we really find that community piece is where this generation of students is really where they find kind of their joy. Um, it's, you know, it's, you can also find it in your individual residence halls, but it's when they're with their people that you really see laughter and you see people really thriving. Our goal here is to develop smaller communities of belonging, as you've probably heard through Quad X. Um, Quad X is really a, an opportunity to build depth. Um, and we're looking at a complementary kind of style and mission on our side of developing smaller communities of belonging. Um, and this idea of belonging, this working definition of belonging, we really take from some of Brene Brown's work that starts to talk about belonging. And we use this as kind of the entry for first and second year students, because if students don't feel like they belong, um, it's hard to have conversations across difference. It's hard to have conversations around political ideology. Um, so making sure students first feel they, like they belong before we start challenging kind of the, some of their um, understanding about themselves and the world around them. Um, so you can read that quote, but really talks about belonging is somewhere where you want to be and they want you. And fitting in is really about like having to compromise who you are. And we really want students to thrive authentically, be who they are um, and love who they are when they leave here um, and feel good about kind of the identities they hold and the community that they've built. Um, we do that through some of our smaller programs. Um, the Mary Lou Williams Center has sophomore circles where um, students come together and talk about um, things affecting them. So that could be the job search, that could be stress management, it could be perfectionism, all of those things. Uh, many of our groups have mentor programs where they collect um, Mijente, which is our Latino uh, student group. They connect Latino alumni um, with uh, Latinx students. So first year students are mentored by both an upper class student and a Latinx alumni. It really creates a pipeline of um, kind of short story sharing, reassurance, resilience, 
Um, Blue Devil Buddies is a program that's put on by SGA, ESG here, um, where they pair a first year student and um, an upper class student. And this year, I think we had our record number of applications. Um, and it's really an opportunity for a student to be to kind of help one another navigate campus and understand um, how to get through Duke. Um, our CSGD or Center for Sexual Gender Diversity does Friday kickbacks where they just hang out um, and they'll either make cupcakes or learn how to knit or it's a low stress opportunity to just hang out, take a deep breath and get to know other folks. Um, we also have freshman senators and DU has freshman programming um, that really allows students to get engaged right out of the gate. Um, and it's something that is really important to us. A lot of the research around higher education shows that students who are involved and engaged um, have a higher level of satisfaction with their experience at their university. They have higher GPAs um, and, and then in turn, there's a higher alumni involvement. These are all really critical pieces as we think about um, the changing demographic of our students, um, as well as kind of what our goal here at Duke is to think about the student experience. Um, I'll stick it, I'll kick it to our students in just a minute, but I wanted to introduce them. Um, the wonderful Jada is um, a sophomore from the Chicagoland area. She's a Baldwin scholar, um, and I, I have appreciated getting to know Jada. Her curiosity, her questions, her thoughtfulness around things is really um, inspiring to me and to others. Drew Flanagan is a junior from New Jersey. Um, Drew is our, uh, I call him our retired SOFC chair, but Drew has been really critical in creating changes at Duke that have really benefited students. Um, and he's championed a lot of changes that make Duke more accessible to students um, and has just done some really good work. Um, and then Amy will be graduating soon. Um, she's a senior from Maryland. Amy is a very creative mind um, and has brought a lot to the student population. Um, and appreciate the way she thinks about things. And she'll be our new um, Student Capacity and Coalition Building Fellow in the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity. So they'll talk a little bit about how they have um, find their sense of belonging here at Duke and um, what we could do um, to make it better. So Jada, you are up, my friend. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, as was stated, I'm from Chicago. I know Shruti said I'm from the Chicago area, but I'm from Chicago. Um, <laughs> very proud about that. But yes, my name is Jada. I'm a sophomore, um, and I'm majoring in public policy and psychology. Um, and right now, my favorite thing about Duke, um, other than food, is that <laughs> the ball is truly in your court. Um, so you can really do anything you set your mind to, and Duke has all the resources for you. So like, um, instead of just being a student, you can be an instructor about anything you want to do. Um, you could be an undergraduate researcher. Um, and you can always, you're always empowered to use your resources to basically make your ideas come to life, whatever they may be. Um, and I've taken so like a lot of advantage <laughs> of that fact um, all around campus. Um, as for why I chose Duke, um, university as a whole, they just have a culture of community and helping each other. Um, and since I came from a background where there wasn't a lot of resources and, you know, resources distribution wasn't a thing, you kind of had to like fight for what you wanted. I knew when I came to Duke, I wouldn't have to fight um, anymore. It wasn't really cutthroat. Um, and also, I remember going to like the webinars like these and just seeing people care a lot and really make it known that they care about students, whether or not they come to Duke. Um, especially where I work and where I find a personal home is the Mary Lou Williams Center for Black Culture. Um, very connected, um, very tight community there. Um, lots of programming professionally, academically, and socially. Um, and they've just been such a pillar for me personally and a lot of like Black students. Um, and aside for that, I'm also a Baldwin Scholar, um, which is one of our living learning communities. And it's a four-year women's um, leadership program. And I found so many great friends, so many great mentors from that program. Um, even where we're placed in few quad, um, so many people come to our common room to just talk to us. And um, we've made so many different friends from there. We love taking in freshman babies, helping them out. Um, so that's really great. Um, I'm also a part of the Penny Pilgrim Women's Leadership Program, um, the Student Affairs. Um, and that's another women's leadership program where it's really cool how each um, student gets matched to a mentor. Um, from campus, and it could be faculty, staff, like anybody um, who's just an employee at Duke, um, and they do they do it based off of what you're looking for in a mentor. So, for instance, for me, I really wanted somebody who was 
um, to the point, you know, also um, has the attitude of a big city, uh, very just honest. Um, and I got someone who was like basically over Duke dining and I'm like, whoa, and I got to find out about just different processes in the university, um, how they um, kind of decide where to place things, where to place resources. And it got me a really interesting perspective on policy, even in a smaller part of Duke. Um, and as for my last home, I know I do quite a lot. My last home is the Office of Student Conduct. Um, I'm a disciplinary advisor there. Um, and I've been working in the office for two years because I started my first year um, advising. Um, so the policy many we have this year, I helped to work on um, to actually edit and make recommendations for last year, which is very cool. Um, but they've also been just so kind, great to me, gave me so many opportunities, opened a lot of doors. And I got to learn so much about the university just from working and talking to different faculty and staff um, involved around that office. Thank you, Jada. Uh, we're really glad you chose Duke as well. So, um, Drew, you're up next. Awesome. Thanks so much for the, the intro. Uh, my name's Drew. I'm a junior, about to be a senior, which is kind of crazy, uh, reaching the end of the year. Um, as Shruti mentioned, um, I am retired from my uh, Duke student government role, um, but it's been really nice over the last um, few weeks to reflect a little bit. Um, next year, I'm really excited to continue to be involved with class councils and think about how do we sort of build community for seniors going into the final stretch? Um, how do we start um, connecting us all with sort of alumni networks and really start thinking about um, our time after Duke, um, which I think is, is a pretty cool uh, direction to move into. Um, a little bit sort of about um, my time, as I mentioned, um, I worked in Duke student government. Um, I served as the SFC chair. And so one of the things I had the opportunity to do is work with um, nearly 350 clubs on campus um, to help support them with resources um, and whatnot, really be sort of a bridge between um, leadership on campus um, and administrators. And so I think I've seen um, a lot in terms of the the level of spirit um, and excitement um, I have, other Duke students have to sort of do things. I think that's one of the reasons um, I chose Duke was because of the different co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities. Um, and I, I know like when I, when I first came to Duke, I was pretty overwhelmed at first because there was so much to choose from, so much to do. Um, everything's an opportunity cost, right? If you're not doing this, why aren't you doing that? Um, and so I think for me, I know I used to complain when I started that you're always on at college, right? There's never sort of like you go to the school day and go home. And so I think for, for me and a lot of others, uh, it's sort of about over time figuring out sort of where do you fit in? Where do you get involved? And I think Shruti's team has done a really good job of sort of making different pathways for students, um, whether that be identity and cultural centers, leadership programs, um, DSG like myself. Um, I think there's just sort of a lot of capacity to get involved in different ways. Um, and I had the opportunity to serve as uh, the president of my dorm my freshman year, which was sort of a really cool way to um, people I met like two weeks ago, put on events with, um, go out to eat in Durham with. And so it was really nice to have sort of built in programming and whatnot. And one of the things I think is exciting with Quad X coming up is that sort of that experience, that first year um, piece that I think Duke gets um, right and does a really good job of on East Campus. Um, I think that's super exciting to see it sort of extend to, to West Campus um, and for students to have like opportunities to get involved there. Um, and yeah, I guess a little bit more about um, why I chose Duke um, and why sort of I, I enjoy being here and being a student here. Um, I think another big piece that I haven't mentioned is just sort of this respect and celebration of difference at Duke um, that I think is sort of unmatched in many ways. I know Jada mentioned um, the different homes she feels. And I definitely feel like um, I felt a lot of different homes on campus, um, whether that is research with a class and just sort of having access to professors um, or some of the other sort of student involvement, um, different activities I've been able to be a part of. I, I think that's super, super awesome. And then sort of the, the third reason, I guess I'd say I chose Duke um, was school spirit. Um, I think that's sort of, uh, obviously you have basketball, which helps with that. Uh, but I think that sort of extends outside of Cameron. Um, I think people are just really excited to do things. And um, I know I always say to people that, sure, you join a club that focuses on quant trading, right? Or sort of art, right? But at the end of the day, I think everything is social. Uh, 
So my Duke student governing executive board team, we all like go out to dinner or we'll do a watch party for like the final four. And I think that's one of the nice things, um, especially coming out of COVID is having sort of different opportunities to, to do even more than sort of just the club's basic mission, um, which has been, uh, been super great. Um, and then sort of another community that I think is um, definitely unique is I'm a statistics major. Um, and so that's a smaller department. Um, and so one of the things I've really liked about that is getting to know those professors every other Friday or so they do these like kickbacks of everyone in the major coming together, um, which is super nice. I went to a smaller high school. So I think sort of making Duke small and finding different outlets has really been um, sort of nice, whether that be sort of academically or, or extracurricularly. Thank you, Drew. I'm jealous that you got to retire before I did, but uh, thank you for everything that you did in that role. Um, next, we will have Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm um, glad to be here. Uh, like Shruti said, I'm a senior. I'm from Rockville, Maryland, just north of DC. Um, I use she, her pronouns. And yeah, so I guess I can start a little bit with why I chose Duke. Um, I mean, I think ultimately, like, Duke is Duke, right? Like um, when I got in, I mean, I was ecstatic and I came here and I think because my main choices were either like going to um, state college near home or like going here, I think for me, a lot of it was just like wanting to be away from home. I remember though, two of the major selling points when I visited Blue Devil Days were program two, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. And also the Thompson writing program. Um, I really was into writing, still am. And so just a quick brief on the Thompson writing program is there's essentially a whole like studio and program dedicated to like helping people out with writing, like the Thompson writing studio. You can just go in with anything, whether it's for class, whether it's for fun and meet with a consultant for like an hour just to like go over your piece and you can continue working with them. So that was a huge selling point for me. Um, when I swiftly learned that was just a very brief introduction to all the resources that Duke had to offer. Um, like both Drew and Jada had said, I think my freshman year, I was initially pretty overwhelmed by just everything that Duke had. You feel like you have to do everything all the time uh, or else you're not making the most of your Duke experience. But I think like most people that just kind of calms down as you go on and like, you choose what really like works for you and where you fit in. And I think Duke is, I mean, it's true that like in the past, Duke hasn't always been maybe like, I think as an elite institution and as a PWI, um, it was often, I've heard from like alumni and students that maybe it wasn't the most welcoming place for them. But I think that um, Duke is constantly making an effort to like do better at that. And I think Right now, my position as the fellow at the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity, I get to see a lot of that behind the scenes as well. And I think both with like, for example, the construction of the Rubenstein Art Center for like um, students like in the humanities where they weren't feeling as supported because Duke was a research STEM institution, um, whether that's like the construction of the CMA, like the creation of my role as the fellow. Um, I think Duke is working a lot to kind of support students of marginalized identities. And I think in my experience at Duke even, just in the four years that I've been here, it's already gotten better. Um, so yeah, I think the culture and identity centers are great. Um, I would frequent the Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity, the CMA a lot. And I think there's just a lot of dedicated programming to actually create a community and space for marginalized students um, in an environment that wasn't always for them. Uh, which I really appreciated. And I think in terms of like academic belonging, I can talk a bit about program too. So I studied um, my own major, which I made, which was narrative arts, storytelling forms and functions, because I could not decide between writing, film, theater, et cetera, et cetera. And so I made my own major. So this is basically a program where you put in a proposal your sophomore year um, that's you like lay out all your core courses, you talk about why you need to make your own major as opposed to like combo any number of majors, minor certificates. Um, and I think I really appreciate the program too because it really forces you to have clarity in like why you're here and what you're studying. And I think it was super academically, 
academically enriching for me personally, um, because I think as a sophomore, it led me from being like, oh, I can't decide between like writing and film, so I'll do both, to actually being like, oh, this is like what I want to study, and these are the specific classes that like will get me there. Um, and I think also you have to like write up for each of your classes, like why they actually contribute to your field, stuff like that. And I think having that experience and being able to really like craft my own course of study really helped like my academic experience. And I ended up, I think, being really intentional and gaining a lot from that. Um, and I also think just the faculty here are super great. I think one thing you'll see about Duke is both that the faculty are extremely willing to like mentor and be there for you, but also Duke as an institution makes it pretty like easy to meet with faculty and like build relationships. So you have something called like flunching where you get like $70 a semester to just take professors out to lunch. Um, there's also like Duke Conversations, which is a club where they have like these big dinners with professors and like you can just go to their house and talk to them about random topics with a group of students. And I think getting to do stuff like that is something that I think is pretty unique to Duke. Um, and I think having those faculty mentors early on really helped me. Um, and yeah, I think Duke as a whole just has a lot of stuff to offer their students. And I think building those communities has been definitely a priority in recent years, which I really appreciate. Thank you, Amy, and big thanks to Drew, Amy, and Jada for being here. <clears throat> um, Grace and friends, are there any questions we can answer? This is our opportunity for families to type in if you have questions. Um, if there aren't and folks are just enjoying absorbing these students' um, amazing stories, we can also wrap early. Um, but I wanna give another minute or two and I should have prepared a fun question that would also be, um, this, uh, I'm going to ask this while we wait, and then if there are no questions, we'll wrap. But one of my favorite questions I think we can never, I never get tired of, is um, just a highlight of your Duke journey. Like, do you have a story, a day, a sort of top memory that you'd like to share? Because I think what's powerful for families to hear is that they're often different for our students. Um, so maybe if you all had a brief story about that, that would be awesome. You can just unmute yourself when you're ready, or I can call on someone, but I don't want to pressure you. It's a big question. I could start. Um, I think for me, as someone that started college in fall of 2018, my uh, first year spring, March of 2020, COVID hit, I think uh, sort of a top moment for me was the start to this year um, when there was sort of a welcome back event, picnic. Um, and it was definitely sort of a very like energetic, lively, there were, there were literally fireworks. Um, so I think one of the nice things for me was seeing everyone back in one place when we had spent almost a year and a half all trying to not be in the same place. Um, so I think sort of this year has really been um, sort of nice in that sense. And, and that event with like food, different people, the, the sophomore class retaking their photo that they never had a chance to do um, was just sort of a really nice sort of full circle moment. Um, to Duke that looked a lot more like um, when I started. And say for me, a highlight is something that's just, it's not like an isolated incident, something that's recurring um, because all the faculty and staff that I've encountered have been so caring <laughs> and loving often to like an annoying degree. Um, Cause I know too, I'll just be out and truthy sometimes there, I'll just be out on BC Plaza walking and then they'll be having lunch or like somebody from student affairs would be there and they'd be like, hi, Jada, how are you doing? And usually I'm like running somewhere, like just trying to get my smoothie to, you know, calm my nerves after an exam or something. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And they're like, really? You want to talk about it? Like, let's sit. Um, and my professors are all like that too. Like, they'll just take me under their wing, talk, you know, and always their doors are always open. Um, so even if, you want to do things on your own or you want to like kind of shy away from just talking about anything, they're really around for you um, a lot of the time, which I appreciate. They really make sure that you're never alone, like in any part of your process, um, which I appreciate. I can go. I'm um, kind of like Drew, my college experience was 
uh, cut, not cut short, I guess, but interrupted in the middle of my sophomore spring. And I think a lot of people say that like sophomore year is when you really start to like belong and feel at home at Duke. Um, and I think I was really feeling that. And we went home for spring break. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to come back and like be with my friends for the end of the year. And they were like, don't come back. I was like, oh, wow. Um, but I think coming back this year um, felt a lot at the beginning, just like picking up where everyone left off. Like it felt like like I remember talking to a few friends and we're like yeah we feel like sophomores but now everyone's like oh you guys are seniors will you tell us what life was like before COVID and we're like oh we were like kids then I don't know um but I think my very specific moment was um so I'm in Duke Chinese dance uh, and I was in sophomore year but we didn't end up having an in-person showcase uh my sophomore year because we were sent home and then last year it was all virtual but we finally had our first in-person showcase in three years, like earlier this month. And I think that that showcase was just so exciting and so like fun to just finally get to have after so long. Um, and it really felt once again, like actually like, I don't wanna say like everything going back to normal because I don't know that there will be like the same normal that it was, but it did feel like campus life was returning to a similar state that it was. Um, so I think that was just really fun to have too. Um, and yeah, that's my memory. We just had a question come in that I'm gonna throw to our students. Um, this is a question I appreciate a lot. So the question is how often do you talk to your families during the school year? I can jump in with this if you guys need to think, but um, I, I mean, I text my mom every day still. I think early on freshman year, it was harder for my mom maybe than for me. It was pretty hard for me, but I think when I got to do freshman year, it was like the first time that I'd really been away from home for a long time. It was a funny story, but there was something, I was, I lived in Wilson dorm, which is where the basketball players live, which was very exciting, but there was something about my room where it would put my location on the highway and so like every night at like 9 p.m., my mom would call me and be like, why are you on the highway? And I was like, I'm not in my highway. It's happens every night. You know, I'm in my dorm. Um, so yeah, my mom calls me a lot still. If I'm like out at like 9 p.m. on campus. My mom's like, oh, are you going to go home soon? I'm like, it's okay. Like we've been through this. Well, yeah, I mean, I still talk to my family a lot. <laughs> Um, I might be on the other side of the uh, the parent talking spectrum. Um, I would say about once every two weeks, maybe. Um, and sometimes I, I track my mom to see what she's up to. Because uh, I'm kind of curious what's going on at home. Um, but yeah, I'd say it sort of depends on the ebbs and flows of the semester, how the week is going. Um, I think one of my favorite things to do is like catch my, my mom or my dad up of like sort of happenings for two weeks um and so yeah I'd say once every two weeks but I definitely say throughout my time it's it's changed a lot well, definitely when I was a, a first year um much more common though I tried like the first two weeks I was like I am like brave I'm on my own I'm not calling anyone uh but then you slowly slowly slip back but it's definitely been nice to um develop other support systems networks people I can talk to um, so sometimes when I have that sort of desire to chat with someone, talk about my day, something that happened that was a, a win or maybe didn't go so well. Um, I think one of the, the weird things that makes me feel like I'm a lot older now is that maybe my first inkling isn't to call home, um, but it's to go to sort of my neighbor down the hall um, in my dorm. And so I definitely think that's been sort of a, an evolution that a lot of people share. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it also depends on your norms too because like my freshman year of college wasn't the first time I was gone from home for a while so they were kind of like used to it um also I've always been very independent and kind of just on it so my parents will check in like every once in a while um but they know that I'm always going to be trying to do something make something so they they kind of give me my space um I know not all parents are like that <laughs> but 
because I know um, my roommate too, she makes an effort to call like her parents every day because they're just that close. She'll call at the most minor inconvenience. She'll even tell on me um, for some things. So I got to know her parents really well. Um, yeah, and then they check on me. So that's that's like another layer. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on who you are. Um, like, first of all, as a student and like as a family unit, um, I would say if you're concerned about, you know, just commu lines communication between like you and like your student, um, and depending on like the amount of trust you have in them, I would say try, try to just calm your nerves about it because it will, it will be nerve wracking, like going to college for the first time. Um, but what I found to at Duke, at least personally for me, um, that when people show trust in me, right, and um, kind of assume that I'll be able to handle independence, I was able to do it a lot better um, rather than as opposed to like all the anxiety my parents also had at first. Um, cause that made me like second guess a little bit, like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so it depends, just try your best. All right. We have a, uh, reflective group this evening. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Desai wrap us up, um, for the night. Yeah, um, and big thanks to Jada, Drew, and Amy for being here. I learned a lot, um, and it was refreshing to hear your stories. I'm also leaving grateful that when I was in college, there's no location tracking. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so I, you know, I think our goal here, and hopefully, I, I think these three are the fact that they know I was able to reach out to them quickly, and they were able to respond. Um, many of them have my cell phone number. I think that just is an indication of kind of what a student experience can be. And I also know that there's students on the other side who are still trying to find out where they belong, where they can make home, how they can make friends. Um, and we want to meet those students where they are as well. Um, so if there's students, your own students or students that we can support, we're always happy to find ways to do that. Um, but I also hope that the three of these students also show us that there's no cookie cutter way to go about finding your place here at Duke. We do offer lots of opportunities. Um, we're working on this, like, I need to be busy all the time syndrome that all of our students have. Um, and because we also believe in rest and finding moments to take deep breaths and all of that. Um, but it's, it's really an opportunity for us to get to know students, to continue to build relationships with students um, and build programming that they think is relevant. Um, and that they really value and appreciate. We really believe um, from our vice president down that our job is to be partners with students um, in creating their own Duke experience. And so at the end of the day, I think if we're doing that, we've done a pretty good job. Um, and we wanna compliment kind of the academic mission and make sure that they feel good about being successful in the classroom as much as they do finding themselves outside of the classroom. So I appreciate everyone's kind of attendance today um, and hope we can continue to work together with you all as parents um, and families. Um, and if we can do anything for you all, we're always here to help. I just wanna echo our thanks um, to all of our panelists this evening, um, Drew, Jada, Amy, Dr. Desai. Thank you for sharing your time and your stories with our families. To all of our families who are still on, if you want to revisit any of this wisdom, um, we're recording the session and we'll have it posted in 48 business hours on our website. Um, if we can support you as your student or you or your student as your student wraps up their semester, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at familyprograms at duke.edu. Otherwise, have a good night. Thanks for being here. <laughs>